On July 27th of 1933, George P. Colby passed away at the age of 85 in Casadega, Florida. Now, if you joined us on Friday in our deep dive into Casadega, Florida, you know that George is the founder of this particular spiritualist camp. But did you know where George P. Colby is buried at Lake Helen Cemetery? There is allegedly one of seven devil's chairs but before we go any further you know what to do please hit that subscribe button and give us a like as always such a very very special thank you to our patrons and our producers here on esoteric atlanta without you guys we would not be able to do what we do if you would like to join our patreon and our producer community there is a link down in the description box below welcome to esoteric atlanta my name is bryce and today after a long break because we've been doing the emerald tablets we are going to be looking at a mystery monday by talking about the devil's chair of casadega florida Now, I know I got a lot of cemetery buffs on this channel. I myself love a good walk through a cemetery. I um, don't believe that most cemeteries are that haunted. However, there are a few exceptions. One of these exceptions of a haunted cemetery is the Oakland Cemetery here in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, if you have been on the channel for a while, you know that Oakland was one of the first videos that I ever released years ago on this channel. That video will be down in the description box below. Now, the reason why Oakland Cemetery, in my opinion, Opinion, is one of the cemeteries that is haunted is because Oakland Cemetery was a very social, it was kind of like a social club back in the Victorian ages, as macabre as that sounds. Um, Oakland Cemetery here in Atlanta is still a very social area. We go there a lot. It's a beautiful cemetery. I've, I've done other videos live in Oakland Cemetery. And the reason why it is haunted is because the spirits there are actually enjoying their time socializing with the dead, the other dead, as well as with the living. Well, the same can be said about Lake Helen Cemetery in Florida. Now, Lake Helen Cemetery is not as big and is not as robust as the Oakland Cemetery is in Atlanta, Georgia, but we see a lot of the similar features. For example... Back in the Victorian ages, people would picnic and socialize at these cemeteries, and they created what they called morning chairs. These morning chairs were chairs that were built by brick or cement in the cemetery for loved ones to go and sit with their recently departed loved ones. Now, I know you guys probably, again, if you've been on this channel for a while, you know my opinion about burial. I definitely believe that we should not be burying our dead. Now, again, it's your choice what you want to do with your body once you've passed away. But I definitely am someone that really, really wants to be burned when I go. And the reason why I say this is because I believe that cemeteries are used for various purposes. I believe that when the body, when the spirit, the soul has left the body, the powers that be or the dark forces can pull from the remaining matter to get little essences, little energetic essences to use for whatever type of witchcraft they're doing. I also believe that this can sometimes bind a soul into a certain area. So my opinion is burn it. Burn me, please. I do not want to be stuck on this earth after my soul decides to leave. But again, that's totally up to you what you do with your dad. I do want to also point out that even for us white folk, us European folk, 
our ancestors before the onslaught of the Christian church also burned their dead a lot like people in India still do to this day. This might be confirmation biased on my part, but in my research into the devil's chair, I kind of felt like, like told you so, like this is not, we gotta be burning the dead. But now, as I said in the opening, there are allegedly seven different devil's chairs across the world. Now, I want to remind everybody watching right now, and I also want to, if, if you're new to this channel, um, just make this statement quickly, because this is going to kind of uh, ex maybe explain more of the complexities of folklore and legends like the Devil's Chair. We have to remember that scientifically and spiritually, darkness cannot create anything. It can't do it. The only thing that can create is the light. Now, we have this area of Casadega, Florida, which, again, if you were here on Friday and watched the deep dive into Casadega, Florida, you know that Casadega, Florida, allegedly holds a vortex that is just as potent and just as powerful as the vortex found in places like Stonehenge. Now, in my opinion, vortexes, portals, these are not necessarily good or bad. They're basically just doorways into another world, another realm. So with that being said, it really depends on who the person is using that particular portal or vortex as to whether it's going to be used for good or for bad. But going back to the scientific look at creation, all of these vortex, all of these places were originally created for the good. Because again, darkness can't create anything, only the light can. Now, it is interesting that this vortex, this particular point on the map, lies deep in the heart of the Bible Belt. I live deep in the heart of the Bible Belt. And I do believe that with all the folklore of these particular places mixed in with the fear of Christianity or what Christianity, the fear Christianity instills in people, the folklores tend to take on a more powerful existence, right? Because people fear what they don't understand. I fear what I don't understand. And so these, these legends become even greater and more powerful than what they originally were supposed to be. Now, this particular chair was, for all intents and purposes, built to be a mourning chair for the husband of the woman who is buried at in this plot. Now I'm gonna be I'm gonna be placing a video down in the description box below that's from another channel. I believe it's called this the the paranormal twins. I I discovered this video in my research for the devil's chair and I watched it. And normally for me, I'm not a huge fan of watching like ghost hunters or anything like that because nothing really ever happens. But in this video, a lot does happen, including communicating with the person Mary. Now, again, take everything with a grain of salt. Obviously, if you're someone who does not believe in an afterlife, then you might think this is all a hoax, which is totally your prerogative to think that. But I will remind you, scientifically, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transmuted. So something has to happen to our energy when our body dies. That's just science. But again, I'm going to be placing this video down in the description box below because it does appear that with this particular devil's chair in Casadega, Florida, from what these boys were getting from this deceased person, is that she, it made me feel like she kind of hangs out there now because perhaps what was initially made for good has now been used for bad. In one of their channeling sessions, she says that people come here for her bones, which, boom, my friends, that is what I'm saying. Thank you, Mary, for confirming. Again, this might be confirmation bias, but for confirming what I've been suspecting all along. There, are These nefarious groups are able to harness energy from the, the natural body of the deceased person in order to do their hocus pocus. So it, I got the feeling, and of course, the boys might have a different feeling, but just me watching this and watching their interaction, I got the feeling that Mary kind of hangs out in order to protect people. Because they say once you sit at the, in the devil's chair, 
there's a couple of things, a few things that could happen to you. For starters, the devil will start to talk to you. A lot of people say that after this experience, your days are numbered. Many people say that people who sit in the devil's chair and communicate with the devil after this will go on to pass away shortly after or get very, very sick. Now, once again, we, spoiler alert, we're all going to die someday. So I don't know if that is an exaggeration of facts or if there have really been numerous cases where a perfectly healthy person has sat in the devil's chair and then been cursed afterwards. They also say that you can place a can of beer, an unopened can of beer on the devil's chair, leave it overnight, come back, and the can is not opened but yet empty. Now, there was a funny thread that I was reading on Reddit, I believe, where people were like, yeah, it's because everybody in that town is a fucking al alcoholic, so if you leave free beer out, they're just going to come take it anyway. I, I laughed at that. I like a good joke, but it still doesn't explain why the can is never opened. Now, there are even more nefarious things that people have spotted in this particular cemetery. Again, remember, there is a vortex here. That is why there is still a spiritual camp here. And I am sure that people of a darker persuasion who practice in the dark arts are very well aware that when you have a group of 3,000 psychics living in an area, it is going to amplify the energy. What do I mean by this? Well, if you've been on this channel for a while now, like many of you watching, hence why you're interested in these kind of stories, are like me. I know that technically I would be considered a psychic medium. Even though that's not something that I focus on, um, whether I like it or not, for better or for worse, I have always attracted spirits since I was a little kid in a very intense way. In fact, I think I'm my boyfriend's favorite toy because ever since we've been dating, he gets cracked up at the fact that things just happen to me and they're very, very, very obvious. Um, spirits just see me and so they come for me. I mean, I they're... Many times have I been standing in the bathroom butt ass naked with my back towards my boyfriend drying off and he will see scratch marks just appear on my back. Many times he's seen my hair pulled. Many times he's seen me lose energy when we've been in really intense places where I'll just kind of, it's like someone's feeding off of me. He knows that my whole life this has been an issue. It's not something I want, but it's something I have. And it's not something that I, I really would wish on anybody else. So with that being said, even though I myself do not work as a psychic meeting, it's just medium, it's just something that happens to me. All of the people that live in Casadega obviously were born with a certain ability as well. Now, they have decided to hone in on that ability and use it for good. I believe most people are using it for good. But nonetheless, that energy is just there. And so you have this like magnetism with this particular vortex. Of course people of a nefarious persuasion are probably going to make use of that, like strike while the iron's hot. And so this is my perception of the devil's chair because there have been stories. Now, the devil's chair is so intensely known about, especially the one in Casadega, Florida. Again, there are six other ones, which I will hunt them down and cover them on this channel as well. But especially in Casadega, Florida, that cemetery is watched 24-7 because of the amount of, of, of activity that happens there. It is said that if you are found to be at the cemetery after hours, so like after 7 o'clock, you will be charged with trespassing. Listen, Linda. Listen, Linda. My ass is not going into that cemetery past seven o'clock at night. Anyway, I'm not that stupid. I know, listen, I know that I am like a beacon of light in the darkness for spirits. I know that. I've had so many fucking attachments and so many spirits 
follow me home my whole life, then I'm not going to mess around with that. If I go and visit this cemetery, which I'm planning on doing that when I go to Casadega, I will go at like two o'clock in the afternoon. I ain't sitting on no chair, not doing it. I will probably leave some flowers for some of the people that are resting there to be respectful. And I will probably bring my spiritual bath supply so that I can cleanse myself afterwards because I don't want no one coming home with me. Listen, we fool in this house between my boyfriend, myself and my dog, we fool. But nonetheless, many people have gone out there to try to get answers. Once you've had a paranormal experience, you are constantly questioning what truth really is. And we know with this great awakening that's upon us that we're all a part of, we know that there's a lot more complexity to who we are as beings than we've been led to believe. Science just ain't covering it anymore. Like people are not stupid. Once you see something, once you have that first paranormal experience, you can't unsee it. You can't unexperience it. And so people will go out there to try to understand, to try to have some clarity over what life is like beyond this physical body. Now, there are other groups that reportedly have used the cemetery too. And these have been described by some viewers. They will drive past the cemetery and see large groups of people in like cloaks telling them they can't come into the cemetery right now. In my opinion, that's some Illuminati bullshit and they're doing something real bad in there. But that's just my opinion. That's my conspiracy mind happening. If you are standing in a fucking cemetery with a black cloak on with a bunch of other people, you in a cult, boo. Like, this is a death cult. And if other people can't be involved, then maybe you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. With that being said, let's take a brief word from our sponsors. If you've been on this channel for a while with me, you know that I am a firm believer in the power of food. The power of food being your medicine and being your spiritual source of an energy supply. After all, matter or nature is the Shakti of consciousness. It is the Shakti and the expression of the soul. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I very much promote a plant-based diet along with the Ayurvedic system of knowing what your actual dosha is. With that being said, in my life, in my adult life, I have I've tried many, many supplements before. And you guys know that I am a huge fan of the ASEA Redox supplement, the, the liquid, as well as the gel. But did you also know that ASEA has a vitamin line? That's right, it's called the ASEA VIA. There are four different types of supplements that ASEA is offering. This one is the source, which is whole food and micronutrient complex. They also have Life Max, which supports a healthy lifestyle. They also have an Omega and they have a probiotic. Now, again, with this being said, I am very much a snob when it comes to supplements. Again, I've, I've been using supplements for a very, very long time because early on in my adult life, especially with my yoga career with Ashtanga Yoga, I realized, again, how important the value of nutrients were to your overall spiritual health. The body is energy and food is energy. And if we're giving our body the correct energy, just like you give your car the correct energy, the correct gas, then your body, your mind, your well-being will work better for you. Now, again, yes, there are lots of supplements out there that are frankly crap. And I was not going to actually try the ASEA supplements when I first started using ASEA because I was health happy with the supplements I had been taking. But one day I was on their website and I was like, you know what? I'm actually just going to try it. I'm going to order these vitamins and I'm just going to see how I like them. My boyfriend also is the same of me. He himself is very skeptical of supplements. He's been doing supplemental work for literally 30 years now. And so for him, he too was skeptical. Well, the first supplement we got was the source. In this supplement, it has spirulina, alfalfa leaf juice, wheat grass juice, barley grass juice, oat grass juice, pomegranate juice, assi berry juice, raspberry juice, blueberry juice, cranberry juice, grape juice, goji berry juice, sea kelp, broccoli, cabbage, parsley, kale, dandelion, and broccoli sprouts. 
It says on the box, a food-based micronutrient complex with a unique blend of superfoods, which a lot of what I just read to you is considered a superfood, as well as plant extracts and trace minerals. Now again, once I got the bottle, I was still a little skeptical. I, again, am a creature of habit and I liked the supplement I was on. But right when I opened this, I could smell the potency of the capsules inside. I knew the minute I opened this, this was going to be good. The same thing with the Life Max. Now for me, I do struggle with inflammation because I do have a propensity to have some arthritic flare-ups. This has a lot of turmeric in it and turmeric is nature's anti-inflammatory. Basically, it's like nature's ibuprofen. And as it says on the back that this is designed to counter the negative effects of aging. This supplement contains natural herb extracts, which increase energy levels, support the immune system, and promote healthy inflammatory responses, support joint health, and promote a healthy, more youthful appearance. Now again, these two, in my opinion, are the Mac Daddies. And I will say, two days after my boyfriend being on these supplements, he came home from work saying that he could not believe the amount of energy he had that day. He was so impressed by the quality of, especially this one, of these vitamins, that there was no way he would ever go back to the vitamins that we were originally taking. Now, if you go to the ASEA website, which will be linked down in the description box below, you will see this little category of cell nutrition. Just click on that below and you will see all the different vitamins here. Once again, if you click on the individual vitam vitamins, you can see more details about each vitamin. Now, as you guys know, or if you've been on this channel for a while, you know I am a vegetarian. The omega does have extracts from the fish, um, which obviously a lot of omega uh, products do have fish in them, but from what I have heard, so I don't take the Omega, but from what I have heard from people who do take the Omega, their biggest, biggest takeaway from a C is Omega is that they're not left with a fishy taste in their mouth for the rest of the day. Now, I personally am hoping that one day ASEA will make an Omega supplement that is good for us vegetarians, just like they have done with their Collagen Radiance. They've made the Collagen Radiance vegetarian friendly. So anyway, guys, just another wonderful thing that is brought to you by ASEA. If you are interested or want more information on the vitamin line or any of ASEA's products, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. If you are contacting Jay from a country outside of the United States, make sure you let him know that and make sure you add a plus one to his phone number. That is our country code and make sure you double check that the vitamin line is available in your country that will have to do with whatever red tape ASEA has to go through with your health and, and administration with your government so just double check on that it is available in the United States I think it's available in most countries at this point but again for more information text J text Bryce info to 321-216-8047 if you're already sold on these vitamins and you want to try them I will put a link down in the description box it takes you directly to the vitamin so it makes it easier for you just to quickly purchase. If 30 days goes by and you're not happy with the product, ASEA will offer you a full refund, no questions asked. All right, you guys, with that being said, back to our show. All right, you guys, so let's sum it up again. We got this, this cemetery, this Lake Helen Cemetery that's right adjacent to Casadega, Florida, like right on the outskirts of Casadega. And some people have said it's very close to the hotel, the Casadega Hotel. If that, if you've been there and you can confirm that for me, please let me know. Because I know that Casadega Hotel is also haunted because when I was looking at taking a trip down there and starting to plan it, I realized that my ass needs to stay at a Holiday Inn somewhere outside of Casadega because apparently the hotel is haunted too. And I know I will not get any sleep. So I need to be in a very sterile hotel so just confirm that if you know that down in the description box below but that's interesting so if they're very close together and there's a vortex 
that makes sense. All right. So we've got this, this cemetery next to this spiritualist camp. A lot of the people who have, like George Colby, who founded the spiritualist camp, are buried in the cemetery. So these are highly magnetic people with a certain vibratory rate that allows them to see beyond the veil. Anyway, they're buried there. Some of the graves, from what I could see through pictures, look like that there was already some burials that were there before Casadega was established in the late 1800s. Makes sense. It's close to Jacksonville. It's close to St. Augustine. That whole side of Florida is real old. So that makes sense that there would be some other burials there. Maybe even before the graveyard was officially established as a graveyard. Like maybe it was a family plot or something like that. I don't know, but there are some people that were there. Obviously, they died before Casadega was established, so that's also interesting. So we got this graveyard. The whole establishment of Casadega was set up in the heat of the Victorian age where people were using cemeteries as a social place anyway, and they were building morning chairs so people could go and spend time with their deceased loved ones. Over time, we're coming into the 1900s where we do have, we are in the Bible Belt, so there is a lot of friction already between these spiritualists and these Christians, right? There's already some type of friction, which again, I don't really understand. Even though I don't consider myself to be a part of any type of Christian organization, I'm just a human being trying to figure it out like everybody else. I'm not identifying with the religion. But even though I grew up that way, I do know that they talk a lot about life after death in heaven, right? So they don't believe necessarily that they're like spirits and ghosts walking around but pretty hard i will say too one thing i will say like my mama my mama is a very conservative christian and she was the first person to tell me my ghost story the uh gray man of south carolina where she's from the low country so in the south even though people are christian they are pretty open to ghosts because like everything's haunted down here i mean let's be honest everything's haunted down here but we have this conflicting idea, right? And with conflicting ideas, so like like uh, Catherine and I spoke about cognitive dissonance last week. I'll link that body down below. That's some cognitive dissonance, right? Like you're in a religion that tells you you die, you either go to heaven or hell, but you live down here in the deep south and like everybody's house is haunted. So obviously there's internal friction for most people anyway which very much the macro and the micro describes the macro of the friction that's happening within Casadega. Now over time as we move into the modern world Casadega ends up becoming like the psychic capital of the world because to this date even though it wasn't the first it was not the first spiritualist camp it is now the most populated one. So there's still quite a pull to this area for people who are looking for answers, like you're not, this is a tiny town, like you're not going to go to Casadega for an accountants meeting or like a business meeting. You're going to go there specifically because you want to experience a psychic or you want to have some questions answered about your life, right? So people who are there are there with a specific intention. That focus of intention, I believe, is pulling even more power into this already powerful vortex, which is then allowing the fuckers of this world who want to do like bad shit to harness that and use that if that makes sense so i don't believe i guess i guess i could say that the, the is the devil's hair chair haunted is it haunted by the ghost or is it just silly folklore i guess in my perception it's a little bit of both the fact that this area is real potent and that chair obviously was built for really good reasons for a husband to mourn his wife. If my boyfriend is watching right now, you best be doing the same thing when I die. Although I think I actually think I'm going to outlive my boyfriend because he's older than me. So <laughs> anyway, anyway, I digress. So this old this man like built this chair to mourn his wife in this area. And then over time, I guess because of the proximity of the chair, it became used by bad people and therefore it opened up some demonic activity does that make sense to you guys it makes sense in my head let me know if it makes sense in your head all right so i guess that's the mystery you guys what is the devil's chair you've heard my opinion let me hear your opinion down in the comments section below and of course as i said we will be investigating all the devil's chairs because now that i know there's six more i want to know what those other six are
All right, you guys, I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Do not forget to join us on Aquarius Rising Africa this morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time for us to continue our look at the Emerald Tablets as we do every single Monday. And then, of course, Wednesday, I'm back on Solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa to, to continue our look into the Sophia Code. We've also got some other scandalous deep dives coming up on this channel. So if you are not subscribed and you don't want to miss the fun, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. If you can, please share this video everywhere. It's a fun one. It's an interesting one because our channels do often get shadow banned. So please, please help us out spreading the word. And yeah, if you've been to Devil's Chair and like Helen Cemetery in Casadega, Florida. Let me know in the in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your experiences. All right, you guys, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.